Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have something pretty pretty cool, at least I think it is. And it came all the way from a country that you don't expect that even the post is still working there. Uh, I bought it on, on eBay and there are several sellers that uh, sell this product. And it arrived. It took two months, but uh, it arrived. And uh, I'm uh, really enthusiastic about it uh, until I found a sticker and it said uh, it is uh, x-ray checked. And then I started thinking, oh, maybe I also need to take my uh, precautions. So uh, I found this one. And uh, the seller already said, well, if you want to measure very low doses, this is not a meter for you. This is perfect if there is really something going on. Uh, and you just want to see if uh, if there is a lot of radiation. If this one fires, you already have a big problem. So I thought, okay, I need uh, something else. So I uh, I found this one. It's Chinese, it, but it can measure also a very low dose of uh, beta and gamma and X-ray. So uh, I just keep uh, this one close also while opening. And why all these uh, precautions? Well, it comes from Ukraine and there are several Ukraine sellers that sell these uh, these devices. And uh, well, this one I found, I think it was any devices. It is trustable because it arrived and uh, I'm really amazed that, that, uh, that the postal service uh, still works. And here they are. But before we have a closer look, as a collector, you need to be aware and, and, and the seller of this uh, CDV 720, he made me aware. He said, you need to be careful. You do a lot of test equipment and some uh, test equipment, they can have radioactive uh, paint and especially military devices and uh, especially military radio. There are a few types that are very famous for uh, having radioactive paint. So I will uh, keep the meter close. This one, of course, is for fun for high radiation. And I hope I never need it. But uh, the little one is just uh, good to have around. Well, and here they are. The calibration resistors. Look at this. Some of them look a little bit damaged, but that is not weird because uh, this one is from 1967 and it is the famous uh, P321. Uh, it's a little bit damaged here, but the rest it looks good. And uh, yeah, they have here to keep the temperature stable. I think in the hole here you can put even an extra temperature sensor. I'm not sure, but it looks like it. And uh, this one is one ohm. I have here one, 10 ohms. Even there's some text in Ukraine. It probably says that it was calibrated or at least checked uh, decades ago. This one is from 85. Oh, it's quite new. 10 ohms. Then I have 100 ohms. This one is from 1979. And this is a thousand ohms. And this is even more readable. It was checked in 1992 and 94. Maybe I can put the translator to see what it really is. And uh, yeah, they look quite okay, but they usually uh, keep very well. And we will check uh, their values. This is a uh, 10k I think looks a little bit better and one I already did some cleaning on and look at this then it is like this shiny 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 100k um, 0.01%, so quite precise. It's uh, for low currents. And it is a serial number. This is maybe a type number, I'm not sure. 
and uh, it's from 1963 <laughs> and if we look at the bottom it is all hollow inside but here yeah. so I think there is a really precise uh, coil and that makes the resistance so let's put them to the test 0.01% they should uh, be so uh, we just start with the 1 ohms then we go to the 10 100, 1000, 10k, and uh, 100k. So, okay, maybe I have a T4 wire, I have my uh, Kelvin uh, clips, and uh, well, we probably should shadow it first. This one is making noise, but point 0.1 is uh, nothing, but I just leave it recording. Uh, so, uh, First I try the Sigland, it's an uh, STM3065X. Yeah, this is the SC version because uh, it has a scanner card, but we're not going to use the scanner card. We're just uh, going to use the direct. And um, yeah, I would think this is almost a one ohm. A look at that. I will write that down and then uh, later I can also do it with the uh, Echelant uh, 34401. Let's do the 10 ohms. And maybe the connections are also a little bit. Okay, 10 ohms. Look at that. 100. Is it making a good connection? Look at that. After so many years, they are still good. I'm a little bit amazed. <laughs> okay, 1K. How are we on the 1K? Oh, look at that. I think this is a 1K. How many zeros? Four. Look at this, this is 1k or what? Two more, we have 10k here. That one is a fractional low, 100k. Yeah, that is jumping a bit. Why is that? Let's get the Echelon then. Wow, that was uh, surprisingly good after so many years. Some from 65, some from 69. I think I had one in the 70s and one in 85. So let's say some a little bit uh, older than 50 years and some a little bit less than 50 years, but all a few years, a few decades really. And uh, I think it's less than the 0.01%, but I will, I will calculate that and I show you the, the table. I didn't understand why on the 10K, the 100K, the Sigland was a little bit unstable. So let's see if that is here better with the uh, Echelant. It needs uh, about 10 minutes to eat. Okay, I'll leave it as it is because somehow if I zero it out, it now sometimes already goes to zero. And then here it goes to minus, so better to leave it like it is, then we are most close. And is it, if it is 0, 0.0, then it is here. So we are already a digit lower, so that should not be a problem. Let's go first to the 1 ohms again. And uh, well, let's see what it will do. And let's get an extra digit. Yep, uh, yeah, here we also see that uh, somehow the measurements, it is in four wire, are also a little bit uh, jumpy. I also need to have some sort of average here. Yeah, also, not that bad. But you see, when you are in the small digit, apparently the, the current still varies a little bit still. Yeah, and here it's a lot more stable, 100 ohms. 
And here we have the 1K. That 1K is really, really good. <laughs> Look at that. How many zeros we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So here the 10K is actually a little bit higher, while on the cyclant it was a little bit lower. That also we are talking about almost nothing. Uh, 1, 2, 3 zeros. 100K. Here it is less jumpy, but still it is jumping a little bit. So I also quickly tested on the Brayman and on the Rosui, the LCR meter, but they have not enough digits. So then it's more instead of checking if the resistors are good, it is more that you are checking if you are, uh, if your LCR or if the Brayman is still good. Well, I saw already that the uh, Sigland that was uh, calibrated when I received it and, uh, and the newer Echelon 34401 that they absolutely agree. So. Uh, let me put the numbers there and uh, but let's first have a look if we maybe uh, can make them look a lot better after cleaning. Also have a little bit of, uh, of a rust or it's just a little bit uh, dirty. This one looks actually okay. And uh, yeah here I'm not so sure maybe I want to keep the sticker but then I need to gaffer it with some plastic and then try to clean around it. This one is a little bit oxidated here. There is not much I can change with that. But of course I can make it look a lot uh, better. And I clean it. Here you can see the, the chrome is already almost removed in it. It's almost like a copper is there. Or a brass. And uh, oh, two screws missing. Well the value was good. Still. And here, so I have two with the sticker. This one is completely unreadable, so I'm doubting to keep it or not because I can't read it. So why should I then keep it? It is already a layer of three. The bottom is missing, and this is from the sticker from before. So maybe this one I remove completely. Oh, it's already three or four layers. Yeah, or, or I keep it so you can see it was originated from Ukraine. I'm in doubt. And this one I really need some cleaning because here I hope it has not been in water. I hope it is something else. Yeah, I don't see it in the inside, so I don't think it was water. Then it was just maybe stripped with something. Maybe it was used mobile, strapped in with an elastic band or something, and that made these scratches. So I wonder if I can do this with uh, with my breast cleaner that I usually do. Well, I know we can make it look a lot better as I did here already. Well, I will just start as usual with my uh, kitchen uh, cloth. It is a uh, lemon. It is from the Albertine, but it removes uh, yeah, it removes dirt. And uh, it is not uh, dangerous, so at least most of the grease is then gone. And then we can start with the brush cleaner. So it already looks a lot better. You can now actually uh, read the uh, labels. And uh, it is super shiny. And I still need to uh, <laughs> use the breast cleaner. Here also the labels. Perfectly readable. Without the breast cleaner. Well, I still need to clean that one with the uh, stripe. That I don't see. Here is a newer label. I don't know 
which one it was. Oh, this one. So hopefully I can improve this a little bit. But that will be with the brush cleaner. But I'm already uh, getting there. And I'm just using this uh, brush. So it's the cheapest. Uh, So that uh, took some effort, but the result is here. It is all shiny. It is like new. We can zoom in a little bit lighter. Uh, the one that we already could see the copper or brass color. I was able to improve it a lot. And even that line that we saw also. Of course, where the chrome is gone, it's gone. But it is a lot better. So this is the one arm. The label is a lot better. It will, and it is all shiny. The ten arms. That was a lot damaged. Of course, it is still, but also we're able to improve that. And I kept the labels. And the one hundred. That was the one with the stripe. The stripe is still there, but yeah, it's also shiny now. And here also I kept the label. This one was also, so the ones with the label are the, yeah, they had a tough life. Then here. But also looking a lot better. And this one almost is like new. I was lucky with this one. Although it is an older one, 60, no, 77. And this one is 63. But for 63, very nice. So when we look at the measured values, you could see in the different meters, we have a, a little bit of a different result, but it's still very close. Here, it didn't meet the specifications, but, and according to this one also not, but we are here on one ohm, and yeah, that's the, the lowest value you can measure properly, I think, with your desk multimeter, so that's okay. Here we can see, it is below the 0.01% here also, according to the cyclant also, but according to the echelant not. Here we are, way below, way below. Here we are good, here we are good, here we are good, here we are good. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.